Hey folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to walk you through how I made DIY posters for my movie room and wrap them around acoustic panels. So don't forget to subscribe and please click the like button if you like this video. Thank you. If you want your theatre to look like this with movie posters that gives an actual theatrical feel, watch this video till the end. Now I have another video which covers the details about how I built the acoustic panels. You can see the link for that at the top. Click that if you want to learn how to build those panels. This one covers how to wrap those panels with movie posters. So one thing I've been told is that when people wrap this around the frames, they're able to see the light going through. In my case, I did not have that problem because I wrapped this around already constructed acoustic panels which are wrapped in black spandex. I would not have been able to do this without the help that I got in the AVS forum. There's a dedicated thread for DIY posters. There was also a video posted by one of the members which I found extremely useful to be able to do this. Nick Ball and the other members in that specific thread have been very helpful in advising me as I moved forward through this project. I would like to thank all of them for their help and time on this. So it st all starts with a software called GIMP, which is a free download. You can download the software and install it in your machine. For the actual movie posters, you can go to a site called moviemania.io, which has very high resolution images. You will not have any res any uh, titles of those images, but the resolution is really good, so you can download from there. What you're seeing here is I'm going to use the one of the pictures that I've downloaded, The Lord of the Rings, from moviemania.io. I'm opening it within the GIMP app. The next step is I'm going to the image and scaling the image to a resolution of 150 by 150, which I've told is sufficient for these movie posters. So I'm doing that and then on my pixels there, I'm converting it in inches and I'm changing the width of the panel or the movie poster to match the width of my panel. Right now it's showing a 16.667 width. I'm going to change it to what is actually the size of my panel, which is around 23.875. So if you look at that, it automatically defaults the height, 38.2. Now I'm scaling it. Once it's scaled, you can zoom it to fit the image to your window. Next step involves adding a background layer. So that's what you're seeing here. I'm going to add a black background layer. And the size for that is going to be the size of the cloth that's available on my fabric designs. I'm going to choose the performance knit fabric, which has a maximum height of 60 inches. So I'm going to do that. And on my width, you saw I'd earlier given a 28, uh, I'm sorry, 23.875. So I'm going to add a few inches, maybe about four inches to the right side and the left side for black borders. So I'm rounding it out to 33. So width is 33 and height is 60. So you would see that layer introduced over there, the uh, line that you're seeing there. I want to fill that layer with black background. So I do image fit canvas to layers first and fitting, uh, fitting this image into that uh, layer. And then I'm going to fill the background using the fill tool with a black color. So once this is done, you will see the image has gone to the background. So I'm going to bring it to the foreground by going to the bottom and selecting that one level up. Now that that's done, what I want to do, the next step is to zoom it and see where it is relative to the uh, background, where the image is related to the background. So it's all fits in the screen. You're seeing it's corner, it's positioned at the top left corner. Now I want to center this image within this uh, background and have some borders on the right, left, top and bottom to be able to accommodate the, uh, the, the size for the wrapping around the panel. So first thing what I'm doing is I want to set the borders here. In order to do that, I'm going down to the bottom and changing that to inches, pixels to inches. And I'm going to grab the borders there and I'm going to leave about six inches gap at the top, six inches gap at the bottom. So first thing what I'm doing is I'm going and pulling down that horizontal scale and keeping it at a six inches at the top. I'm going to do the same at the bottom and then going to follow it by the left and the right and then move the image between that so that we have enough black cloth covering available to be able to wrap around the panel. 
Now keep in mind that the 6 inches is just based on my measurements. Yours might be different. So you need to do this according to the way your panels are fit and your panels are sized. So next thing I want to do is grab the guide from the left and move it and keep it at about 4 inches to give space to wrap around the panel. The panel thickness around 3.5 inches. So I'm doing that for the left and I'm doing the same thing for the right. Next I'm going to use a select tool to basically move this picture between those four lines. Now that that is done, as you see I have an odd sized panel. So the image does not fully cover the place that I wanted to wrap around the panel. Uh, so basically at the bottom you've got a black uh, area. So what I'm going to do is I've downloaded another logo for this movie. It's got a lot of the rings and I'm just going to add it here to fill up that black space. So that the poster looks good starting from top to bottom. So first thing I do is open up the image and then change the resolution to 150 by 150. And then I'm going to scale it. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to use the tool over there to basically go and pick up the logo for the lettering. I'm going to bring it to the other side. I'm going to go and select it first. Just making sure that it's selecting the right area around it. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to come back to the other window. And I'm going to paste it as a new layer. Once I paste it as a new layer, you would see that added there. You can't see that very clearly. But you'd see so in a minute. I just go to Tools, Transform Tools, and Scale it. And this gives me the ability to increase the size on this. So I'm going to increase the size on this to see the best layout for it to fit. So here I'm just kind of increasing it, scaling it. And then it goes to the background. So I'm just bringing it back to the foreground. And I'm going to move it back down there by using the Select tool to the black area. As you see, it's a slightly bigger than uh, than the area that's there. It's going over the line, so I don't want it to wrap around the panel, so I need to shorten it. So I'm going to transform tools again, scaling it, and reducing the size so that it will fit there. This is more of a trial and error that you need to do. And then I'm going to be selecting it again and bringing it under the image. Right hand side you will see that this image has three layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first merge these visible layers. All these three are going to be merged into one layer. So you see on the right it's now merged into one layer. So the next thing you'll see is that the site I'm going to upload it to, My Fabric Design, prefers it to be flipped uh, horizontally. So I'm rotating it clockwise. I'm going to save this image. For that, I'm going to go to the file and export as. I'm going to give a name here and export it. When it's exporting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the show preview in image window and going to increase the quality to 100%. The site that I'm uploading to can take about uh, 50 MB. So I want to see what the size is here. It's only 14.7, which is which is which is good for the upload. So I'm exporting it now. now I'm going to go to the site called myfabricdesigns.com, and I'm just going to go to the uh, home page there, and then going to choose the upload button. And I'm going to upload my file here. Now the site will show you a preview of the image that's been uploaded. So as you're seeing here, it selected a basic uh, combed cotton, which is about 54 inches. The first thing I'm doing is setting the design's DPI. So if you remember when we did the scaling, we selected a 150 by 150. So that's the same DPI that I want to use there. So I'm going to first make it a 150 and I'm going to set the DPI. Next thing I want to do is select the right design there. So as you see on the right hand side, the image shifts a little bit. Then what I'm doing is I'm changing it from basic comb cotton, which is only around 54 inches, to the performance knit, which is 60 inch, given the magnitude of my panels. So when I do the 60 inch, now it will try to fit the image within the 60 inch. So now you're seeing it here that it's completely centered, and the image is within that uh, 60 inch height. 
and the width that we selected. So this is the final render that you would get on the printout that you're going to get from My Fabric Designs. So I'm going to add it to cart. So it's about $25 for the fabric that I selected. The site usually runs a promo promo for the uh, purchase. So I got this at a 25% off. So you can usually get these discount codes available if you ask a few people. Um, so I got it for much less than 25. So I repeated the process for three additional images and in total ordered four posters. So I got them from My Fabric Designs after three weeks. And this is what you're seeing laid out on top of the panel. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to position them in such a way that uh, I'm only having the black that goes around, but the actual image appears on the panel. So if you're looking at it, I'm making some adjustments as I move around. So next step involves wrapping the panel around. So what I did was I just turned over the uh, acoustic panel on its face so that the image with its face is lying down at the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is there's a wrapping sequence that you need to follow for, for this. What you need to do is basically wrap the centers on uh, opposite to opposite sides. So I'm starting here on one center on one side. And the next thing I'll do is I'll go to the next side, opposite side and staple it and I do the same at the top and the bottom and once I do that then I go along each side to staple it. Now the challenging part here in the wrapping is that uh, with my spandex panels it was fairly easy to do it because there's no image in print but here you've got to make sure that your image is centered so every time that you do some stapling you've got to make sure uh, just tilt it a little bit and see that the image is kind of centered and is not pulled in one direction or the other. Right. And the other thing is it's extremely important to make sure that you're stapling the right way. If not, then take it out and then re-staple it, right? So the process just shows you how I went about wrapping them. Next, I'm just going to make the panel straight and see if I've stapled correctly. If not, I'm going to just put it back and uh, make any adjustments, remove any staples or move the cloth around. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm lifting and seeing if everything is fine now before continuing with the wrapping. Well, the tricky part is really around the corner, so you just got to make sure that you're folding it correctly so that there are no wrinkles. As you're seeing here, I'm just wrapping it up and folding it around to go to the back. Then I'm going to staple that layer. Now I'm going to be doing each of the corners. Now that's one panel done. I'm just lifting it to see if everything is fine. And then now I have another three to go. Now that's another panel done. I have another two to go. This shows all the panels laid out side by side. As you're seeing, there is a lot of white cloth at the back that has to be trimmed so that it is neat and square. So now this shows the panel after all the excess cloth has been cut out. They've really come out exceptionally well. Now I'm going to mount them back to the walls. 
these are the mounted panels in the theater room. They've come out exceptionally well. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. I hope you really found this useful. I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel and post your comments down below. Thank you so much.